Hello, ladies. Hey, Heather. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. We'll get started in a few minutes. We'll just wait until one o'clock for anyone else who might jump on. I'm excited that you are here today. I'll just give you a preface. I've got Evelyn on the couch having some quiet time and I've got two big ones scootering and biking outside. So you just never know what might happen, but we do our best. That's what this uh, journey is all about working from home. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. It's crazy, but I love it. Good, good. Yeah, and so you guys can, hi, yes, yes, good. I understand. We, like I just said, we do, Laura, we do what we can in the nap times. And I'm grateful that you chose to spend nap time with me because I know that that time is treasured treasured time very valuable and so I want to bring you the value today and I am excited about this topic of morning routine it is something that I am very passionate about because it's made a big impact in my life why don't you guys uh, drop in the comments where you're at with your morning routine. Why don't we say like 10 is rocking it, solid, feel good. One is, I don't have a morning routine right now. If you wanna rate it, okay, good. Good, just to get an idea where you're kind of at. <clears throat> and if you've given any thought, maybe you could think about this before we start too, is if you've given any thought to, um, what you want for your morning routine. What do you, what activities are important for you to add into your morning routine? And I'll also just let you guys know I'm recording. I will be posting this on my YouTube link or my YouTube channel and sharing the link with people who, who need this resource as well afterwards. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get started. I'm Heather. And like I said, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me and talk morning routine and allow me to share my journey with morning routine and how it's impacted my life. And um, so good for you for taking the time out to learn something new and to look at what you want and say, I need a little bit more from this area of my life. So I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a faithful follower of Jesus. I am a homeschooler and I am also a body partner. And I help women build routines, healthy habits that will help them lead the life that they were made to live. I believe that all of us were created with an amazing purpose and Amazing purpose does not just mean like those big sparkly mountaintop moments. I believe there is purpose in the mundane and finding joy and excitement in the mundane makes it so much more enjoyable. And morning routine is part of that. And sometimes it can feel mundane. So we're really going to dig into that today. Um, so my goal here is to empower you to start building a morning routine starting tomorrow. Wherever you're at, I want you to go away from this feeling so empowered that you need to take action because motivation doesn't come until we take action first. And chances are you are an intelligent, capable person. You have desires in your heart. Maybe we just need to sift through some stuff to figure it out but I guarantee that you already know what you need to be doing. You already know what you want to be doing. 
So the job here today, my job here today is to empower you to just take one step tomorrow that will get you closer to that morning routine that you want to build. So a little bit about my morning routine journey, okay? I have been building my morning routine for over eight years. I started building my morning routine by accident when my son was around six months old and he started having patches where he would be sleeping through the night and I would just wake up a few minutes before him and literally start the coffee and stand in my kitchen and pray or thank God for something. Lord, the sun is shining today, whatever it is. I was in the trenches of new mom life. It was overwhelming. And just those few minutes, I was like, this is it. I need this time to just collect my thoughts before I have to show up for the rest of the world for the rest of the day. And I just realized in that moment, those minutes in the morning were golden. And I needed that time and I was in that moment, I knew I needed more of it, but it started so small and it was messy at the beginning, right? Because we know that babies will start sleeping through the night and then they teeth and then they get sick and the routine gets off and you're not sleeping through the night. And then waking up in the morning before, um, before the house wakes up when you haven't slept all night is pretty near impossible when you're a new mom. And so it was this like scattered thing but I didn't give up. I've been working on it for over eight years. And every time I came back to this, because it gave me that peace, that purpose, that feeling of accomplishment before I all, already, before going into my day, because I was experiencing all these things, I kept coming back to this morning routine over and over again. And then I would do a little bit of yoga and drink my coffee and read a Bible verse. And then I was reading a verse every single day. Then I started reading a chapter of the Bible every day. And then I would start doing work. I started working from home and I would work for an hour in the morning. And over time, I have built it where 5 a.m. is my best start. Now, do I start my day at 5 a.m. every single day? No, I just moved and it's summertime and schedules are off and we're staying up later. And so I get some 5 a.m.s in right now, but I'm in a season of transition. And so today I even woke up at 6.30 and it wasn't ideal, but we're gonna talk about all of this embracing the imperfection and knowing what activities we need to do, how to make it automatic, and also giving ourselves grace and prioritizing our activities. What is the most important activity if you only have five minutes to yourself? But I can tell you that being a mom, being at home, serving my family. We all have different roles. We all have different responsibilities. I know that if I don't start my day with intention before I need to serve the rest of the world, I feel very scattered, less focused, and less patient. And those are just to name a few. Okay, so who wants more time in their days? Does anyone have something on their heart that they wanna do and they just feel like, I don't have enough time in my day. Me too, me too. There's things that I get to the end of the day and I'm like, oh, I just wish I had another two hours in the day. And we can find this time in the morning, okay? Another thing I just want to say too, we can find this time in the morning and we have to be okay with baby steps and we have to be okay with imperfection and we have to be okay with small chunks. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to share with you that I accomplished over five years was reading the entire Bible. I started a Bible plan and it, I read probably only 15 minutes a day every morning over five years. And I was able to read the whole entire Bible. And that's just one example of how dedication, consistency, and, and understanding that 15 minutes holds value in the greater picture, okay? So what we're gonna talk about right now is I want you to think about the activities that you'd like for your morning routine, okay? Just really quick, think about it. You could write it on a piece of paper. Think about the activities that you'd like in your morning routine. Why are they important? 
So I'm going to keep coming back to the Bible study thing because this was kind of the foundation of my building my morning routine for me. And it has a greater purpose. Okay. So I wanted to read the Bible every day. That was important for my spiritual journey. I wanted to grow closer to the Lord. And this was very important to me. And so there were, there's lots of mornings when you haven't got enough sleep and it's hard to wake up early, especially in those beginning years, especially in those beginning years. It takes a long time to craft an automatic morning routine. Okay. We have to be committed to this work for the long haul. And so it was really hard and it is really hard. But when you wake up in the morning, if you understand the extreme high level value, big vision goals for your life and what you're trying to build and achieve, that 15 minute chunk of time holds greater value. Because what happens very often is we wake up in the morning and it's like, oh, it's cold. I don't want to get out of my bed, <laughs> you know, and it's only 15 minutes. And like, is it really that big of a deal? You know, I'm just going to, I'll squeeze it in on lunch break, no big deal. But the thing is, is that's a slippery slope. Now, it's going to happen. But if you repeat that, that's a slippery slope in the direction we don't want to go. But if we talk to ourselves differently and we learn to understand the value of what we're trying to achieve in our mornings, we can talk to ourselves differently and build 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And over the years, that is the direction we want to go. And we need to trust the process and trust the growth that's not guaranteed, but we need to be committed to the journey to achieve the goal, okay? So you need to set an intention and every single task. So I really recommend that the tasks that you have in your morning routine, maybe you only have like three. And maybe to start, you only have one. So it, let's use the example of 5 a.m. Let's say right now you're waking up at 7.30 and you want to get to 5 a.m. That's the goal. And you've got, okay, I'd like to do a little reading in the morning, journal, and move my body. How long are each of these tasks going to take you? Only you can decide that. Be realistic. What is the why and the root of each of these tasks and which one is the most important when you think about the big vision goals for your life. And so maybe you just start waking up at 7 a.m. and you do 7 a.m. for a whole entire month with one of those activities and you build, okay? So your intention, you're setting an intention, you have a connected, deep-rooted why with each of the tasks or activities in your morning routine. And this is going to help you to maintain course when things get messy and you've missed a week or you've missed a month and you're like, what's the point? I am a failure. I'm never gonna get this morning routine. You can flip the script and you can say, you know what? I did my best this month and there was a lot out of my control. And, uh, you know, the kids were sick and I was really serving them. And now it's time to get back to me. That is a growth mindset. And so I would encourage that you have some form of personal development in your morning routine because building healthy, sustainable habits for life requires us to accept imperfection and maintain course. And that requires us to rewire our brains and learn to speak differently to ourselves. So, okay, choose cup filling activities. So we've kind of talked about that. What are the activities? What purpose do they hold? That's going to connect to your intention, connect to your vision. Community, okay? So often we want to go it alone. I've been there. I'm like, you know what? I'll just do it by myself. I'm going to, I'm just going to, I can figure this out. I don't want to be a burden to anyone. Nobody actually wants to hear what I have to say. Nobody really cares about me trying to build my morning routine. Nobody really cares. Okay. And um, it's just too much. I'm going to, I'm just going to be over here by myself. This is human nature. 
Unfortunately, this will not produce the success that we desire, the results that we desire. We need to lean in with community and we need to make ourselves accountable to people who are on a similar path and understand the journey and understand the goals. Not only is this going to keep you accountable to the work, it's also going to make the work so much more fun and fulfilling, which is why this is the this is the piece of my wellness community and this is one of the purposes that it serves is accountability for exactly this kind of work and women leaning in together and saying okay this is my goal i'm working towards 5 a.m i'm gonna get there within the year and you know here's the plan and accountability means checking in even on the days when you are not successful and just showing up because it's also our human nature to want to back away and hide when we fail or when we fall short or when we don't measure up. Here's what happens when we lean in when we are not perfect, okay? When we show up when we're not perfect, we're being vulnerable, so I understand that it's scary. I'm right there with you in this work. We allow others to pick us up and serve us. And if you've ever helped anyone on their journey, you know that it's very fulfilling to say, you know what, I've been there. It's okay, keep going, try again tomorrow. It's so, so good when you walk something hard and then you can offer that encouragement to somebody else. So when you are vulnerable and you show up on your imperfect days, you're allowing other people to carry you. And that's a blessing to them. They're also gonna learn from you because somebody always needs to go first and say, I'm not doing this perfectly. When we start backing away from community, it's so easy to go down that slippery slope of this doesn't matter, this doesn't hold value, I don't matter, I don't hold value what I'm trying to accomplish, my vision, my goals, and it's a slope that we don't want to go down. So accountability is a very, very key piece to be able to maintain course. So I have, like I said, I have been working on my morning routine since Luke was, um, Luke was like six months old. Okay. Over the last three years, I have been working as a body partner and I have had the most consistency because I have made myself accountable to my clients and my community. And that is scary. And that is terrifying. And it puts extra pressure or responsibility, whatever you want to ca call it, but it also puts extra results, right? And it serves me. Sometimes we need a little fire under our butts. Sometimes we need a little pressure. That's a good thing. It's going to refine us and produce the results that we want. But as adults, nobody's making us do that. We have to allow ourselves to lean in with others. Okay. Revisit your vision, okay? So when things start to get a little messy, that's when you wanna come back to the big picture. That's when you wanna come back to the vision and allow imperfection. Personal development has been a huge piece of my journey as well and being able to maintain the course and stay through consistency. So what I was gonna share over those last three years, um, we lived through lockdowns, I had a baby and we've moved across the country. And I have been able to maintain my routine, not because I'm perfect, but because I've been accountable to others. I have a very big vision. I've allowed myself to do it imperfectly. I've had days where I wasn't able to show up, but I still showed up with my people. And I said, this is really hard. I can't do this today. And I was honest about the things that were hard. The other thing I wanna talk about when we think about waking up early, my morning routine has turned into a reflection time. When we have time to sit and reflect, we can sometimes come face to face with some things that we've been running from. Something in our, our culture is very uh, busy, right? Have you ever been having conversations with people and they're, how are you doing? And you're like, I'm so busy. And that's your response. And I've done it too, right? 
And then I will walk away from those conversations and I'm like, what is going on? Like, there's so much stuff in my days and like, I could have said something different. And it's just this like fullness of life that we live in, in our current time. When you wake up early in the morning, when I wake up early in the morning and I give myself time and space to think about how I feel, what am I going through? What do I want? Do all of these desires in my heart match up with the actions that I'm taking? It can start to feel really uncomfortable because I'm required to be honest with myself. If I start journaling about what I want, my goals are, my dreams, my things like this, and I see that like the way I'm living my life is not aligned with what I truly want in my heart, I need to take action and I need to get to work. And in my experience, that's hard. And that's another reason why we need community to go along this journey with us. So I just want to leave you with this uh, one thought on this topic of waking up early, because sometimes that is like the actual getting out of bed is the challenge that people face. I've talked it through with people before, and this is something that blocks them. Sometimes there's something deeper that's going on inside of you that you're avoiding, that if you have time in the morning before the rest of your day starts, before you're like, I need to answer to this person, I need to be at these places, all whatever. It, but if you have time with yourself before that, you come face to face with the hard things that are maybe going on in your heart or your life. And so going back to sleep and hitting the snooze button is a way of coping. So just something to think about. It's not always about going to bed earlier so that you can wake up earlier. Sleep is vital. Sleep is important. And that will balance itself out. The more you desire and build that morning routine and find that rhythm, you will naturally go to sleep earlier at night because you will be, you will be ready for bed. <laughs> you will be ready for bed. But we need to think about and be honest with our thoughts and our heart and our body. How does our body feel? And this leads me to a nutrition piece. Putting good things in our body nutrition wise, just like absorbing personal development is going to help us be more aware. Nutrition is important for us to be able to wake up earlier in the morning because we need to have nourished, strong, healthy bodies to be able to get up early and do all the things that we need to do. If we're not fueling our bodies properly, they're going to be tired and it will be very hard to get out of bed in the morning. But on my journey with wellness, the more uh, good food I put into my body, the more aware I become of my thoughts and my feelings and my desires and what's going on and how those things show up inside of me. So we need to think about this as a whole encompassing thing. And I love to think about adding in good things as a way of like, when you add something good in, there's just not as much space for some of the other stuff, right? So we can sometimes think like, okay, you know, we listen to something like this and we're like, okay, I need to cut out this. I need to cut out this. I need to go to bed earlier. I need to do blah, 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 blah. And that's why we want to come back to that beginning piece of like, what's that one thing you want to do in the morning for 15 minutes to start out and to start waking up earlier or 30 minutes or whatever that is, that's going to add something to your day. And eventually that's going to push some other stuff out. You're going to start seeing results. This is going to start feeling good. And you're going to say, you know what? This Netflix show isn't really serving me. I'd rather read in the morning for 15 minutes to start my day. And so I need to go to bed 15 minutes earlier. And it's like this shift. You know, when we say yes to something, whatever it is, we're saying no to something else. Um, you know, for me, alcohol was a big thing. And this is not for, you know, everybody. I'm not against alcohol. But for me, it wasn't serving me. And I learned that, you know. And I learned that if I was staying up late drinking wine, that was saying no to waking up early and taking care of my body in the morning. So instead of thinking like, I have to cut these things out, focus on what you want to add in. That's going to fuel you. That's going to feel good. And eventually you're going to see the stuff that you want to release because you want more space 
for that good stuff in your life, okay? And okay, I think that I am covered all of the main points. Like I said, you know what you want in your morning routine. You know what you desire to do and build for your life. It's already inside of you. You just need to start giving yourself some time. But I can tell you that morning routine has transformed every aspect of my life because it has transformed me. It has given me time and space to work on the things that help me build the confidence to take the action that I have wanted to take in my life, but was too scared to take because I was worried about what people might think or how they would react. But this is honest living and I am in recovery for codependency. And this time in the morning is me getting with God and figuring out what he needs me to do, what he created me to do, and then to go out and do it. And, and be passionate about it and be purposeful and create impact. And that's what I believe morning routine can do for everyone. When we allow it and when we craft it and when we stay the course and link arms with community for the long game. So I would love to know if you ladies that are on the call right now have any questions. If anyone watching the recording has questions, you can send me an email. But if you ladies on the call have any thoughts or questions, you can drop them in the comments and I will try to answer those. Um, and then if not, I'm not going to take any more of your time. And I hope that you found value in that. And like I said, Laura, you are a part of the community already. Jennifer, I have a wellness community for women and I help them build healthy habits. We lean in together. We use uh, the body platform and supplements to support our journeys. And I can share some more information um, with you or anyone else watching um, about how I can serve you through that or one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Have a great day.